Arnold Bocklin's artworks are considered the paradigmatic works of German symbolism, which earned the artist a cult following in the German-speaking world during the 19th century. The writer Max Holber mentions that between 1885 and 1890 almost all of the upper-class homes in Germany had a copy of the Isle of the Dead or Villa at the Sea. The mass consumption of his imagery confirms the contemporary opinion that Bocklin was held above his colleagues in the mind of the public. Arnold Bocklin's artworks, as well as his personality, influenced younger symbolist artists in Germany and Europe. The painting Isle of the Dead held a canonic status beyond the boundaries of German-speaking territories, contributing to Bocklin's international fame. Isle of the Dead is Arnold Bocklin's most famous artwork, both during his life and today. Bocklin made five versions of this eerie painting between 1880 and 1886. The imaginary island of the Southern Hemisphere revives the ancient motif of island burial. The standing figure of the deceased in white and the boatman are the focus of the painting, which is a mysterious symbol meant to steer hidden desires and unsaid longings. As with many of the landscapes among Arnold Bocklin's artworks, this is not a real place, but a painted or visualised mood. Bocklin's works are a subjective synthesis of the interior and exterior world. They are edited notions of memories the artist had. Meaning to represent the soul, Bocklin was memorising his observations of nature and materialised them on his canvases. The Isle of the Dead is described by Bocklin himself, saying, you will be able to dreamingly dive into the dark world of shadows. Arnold Bocklin created his most famous self-portrait in Munich in 1872. The theme is the antithetical relationship between life and death, and the meaning of this relationship for the artist. Though it seems melancholic, the composition speaks of a heightened awareness of life. From the earliest years, exploration of death as a metaphor permeated Arnold Bocklin's artworks. His hometown of Basel boasted itself on many variations of the dance of death, which may have inspired the artist. In the self-portrait with death playing the fiddle, the artist is listening intently to death's tune transforming this vision into a metaphor for artistic inspiration. In keeping with the sensibilities of the time, artistic inspiration was linked to the idea of borderline experiences. The hand holding the brush and the palette are the base for which the composition rises in a pyramid culminating in the artist's head. The act of death is simultaneously a painted attribute, the work of the artist. The significance of this work is seen in its versions done by other 19th century German artists Hans Thoma, Lovis Corinth and Oskar Svinscher. Shortly after arriving in Munich, Bocklin began to work on a new version of The Birth of Venus in 1872. The previous version he worked on in Basel he cast aside, partly in reaction to the criticism of cultural historian and friend Joachim Burckhardt. The scholar who was familiar with Greco-Roman and Renaissance culture objected to the lack of dolphins and large waves typical of the scene of the birth of Venus. This version, titled Venus Anadiamine, included a dolphin, but one that was far from what Burckhardt envisioned. The sea monster is perhaps a reference to contemporary Darwinian debates in Europe. Venus herself contradicts the traditional iconography of the classical theme. According to the myth, she emerged from the foam of the waves or from a mussel shell. Cupids, another traditional part of the scene, with butterfly wings clothe her in the sea foam and crown her with a wreath. The theme of the painting is the titan Prometheus from Greek mythology, who stole fire from the gods and gave it to man. He was punished for this by Zeus, who had him chained down to a rock where an eagle would come daily to feed off of his liver. He was eventually released from his imprisonment by Hercules. During the 19th century, Prometheus became seen as a symbol of freedom, a champion of mankind against tyranny. He also became a prototype of the artist, who received the fire of creative inspiration from the heavens. The image of Prometheus played a key role in the formation of the thought of Karl Marx and Friedrich Nietzsche, who both saw themselves as Prometheus-like figures, stealing new insights from the powers to inspire mankind to rebellion or self-awareness. Arnold Bocklin modelled his own Prometheus based on a classical wall painting of Titius, a giant in Greek mythology who suffered a similar fate. The artist gave an original interpretation of the theme by envisaging Prometheus in terms of a doom-laded atmospheric landscape. One of Bocklin's daughters claimed that the setting was inspired by the view of the clouds on the hills of Monte Morello above Fiesole. One of the most common motifs and creatures from Arnold Bocklin's bestiary is the half-horse, half-man centaur. 
The Battle of the Centaurs, completed in Munich, was widely exhibited and quickly gained popularity in the German-speaking world. The painting is an homage to Michelangelo's unfinished 1492 marble relief Battle of the Centaurs, reworking the classical mythical trope of Renaissance art. The grandeur of the theme and mood spoke to the German nationalism of the late 19th century. More importantly, it reflects the idea of a centaur as the expression of the dual nature of mankind. It shows humanity's animal impulses and the spirit that drives it forward. Centaurs in Arnold Bocklin's artworks are massive, engaged in battle, seething and spitting with fury, with eyeballs bulging with rage. The contemporary description of the painting goes, evidently in an era where the elemental forces still struggled widely with one another and earth was still held in continuous transformation by the forces of fire and water, we see living creatures of this terrible, stormy period of our planet's youth who stand in amazing conformance with the creation emerging from this chaos.